these frogs, Chiricahua leopard frogs to be exact, are being prepared for a very special journey. Beginning here at the Phoenix Zoo, where they were reared from egg masses collected in the wild, they are getting ready to go home. In order to prepare them, we've given them a prophylactic treatment with a solution called itraconazole. It's a fungicide. It'll help us prevent the spread of disease, um, in particular a disease called chytridiomycosis. And we are now treating them. They bathe for approximately an hour in the solution. And after they bathe in the solution, we will rinse them and then package them in plastic containers um, with moist paper towels and transport them up to where they will be released. The Chiricahua leopard frog has been listed as threatened under the Endangered Species Act since 2002. So special care is taken to give them the best chance possible for survival in the wild. There are three major causes of, of declines of, of native amphibians in Arizona. And the first is a fungal disease, which we, uh, prior to releasing them at the, uh, from the Phoenix Zoo, we treated them with a fungicide. So disease is a very important uh, threat to native leopard frog populations. A second major threat is uh, the uh, drought that we've had for the past uh, 10 or so years. Major uh, change in, in our aquatic uh, uh, hydrological cycles, which have impacted native amphibian populations. And then the third major uh, cause of declines of these populations of frogs has been non-native aquatic uh, organisms that have been uh, spreading throughout Arizona. Crayfish, bullfrogs, and some of the uh, non-native fish. There are other species of leopard frog in the state of Arizona, and one of the, one of the ways we can tell them apart from the other species is um, the thigh pattern on the back of the thigh. There's a salt and pepper marking on the Chiricahua le leopard frog thigh, and so it's a, a dark background with lighter spots. After the frogs are treated and rinsed, they're packed in moist containers, loaded into coolers, and driven to their release sites along the Mogollon Rim. We're at a beautiful little watered canyon up near Payson, and this is within the historical range of the Chiricahua leopard frog, and, and not far downstream there was a historical record from here. And they, they used to be very abundant in many of the small uh, creeks and streams along the Mogollon Rim, White Mountains, and, and the associated Sky Island uh, canyons down in southeastern Arizona. Uh, but in the past 30 years or so, Chiricahua leopard frogs, along with uh, some of the other native leopard frogs, have declined quite dramatically. To help stop that decline, Arizona Game and Fish began returning captive raised frogs to the wild in 1995, and today marked a major milestone in their recovery. The 10,000th Chiricahua leopard frog that was reared at the Phoenix Zoo was released back into its native territory. You guys ready? So just kind of put it near the water's edge. And then, yep. Let's see how. There it goes. There it goes. Very good. Number cool. 10,000. Yay! How awesome. Oh, yeah. How very Once fine. the Chiricahua leopard frog was listed, a recovery team was created to help bring the species back from the brink of extinction. That plan includes releases of captive bred frogs, habitat restoration, and monitoring. So why is a little greenish brown frog worth all this effort? They're important competitors and predators, uh, as well as prey items. Uh, native leopard frogs used to be super abundant in most of the canyons. So, so birds and black hawks of, of, uh, and, and many other birds and small mammals and, and even bears will, will uh, consume a, a, a big leopard frog sometimes. So, so many animals depended on them uh, as, as a prey item. Um, and for food, and they also were big uh, predators of a lot of insect pests that we don't particularly like having around. Another reason that they're so important um, is that they're, they're often thought of as, as important bioindicators. Uh, uh, how good a job uh, humans are doing of taking care of the planet, and they've been likened to the canary in a coal mine. Um, and so they're, they're important indicators of, of our stewardship. Uh, so the better that frogs are doing, uh, the better place that uh, uh, you and I have uh, the cleaner water and, and the, the uh, fresher air that we have to breathe. All in all, on this August day, 1,700 Chiricahua leopard frogs and tadpoles were released at five different sites in the Tano National Forest. 
This uh, project has been an amazing partnership between um, the Phoenix Zoo, uh, U.S. Forest Service, Fish and Wildlife Service, and the grazing permittee has been a, uh, become a, a, a good supporter, strong supporter of, of Chiricahua leopard frog recovery. And, and uh, hats off to, to the grazing permittee because you don't often think of, of uh, uh, cattle ranchers as being a friend of a frog, but uh, you know, cattle, cattle need fresh water, uh, as do Chiricahua leopard frogs. So, you know, there is a common bond there, and, and it's, it's very pleasing that this particular rancher uh, uh, didn't uh, look at us uh, askance and, and walk away from the table when, when he heard we were talking about uh, recovering frogs in his area. It never gets old. <laughs> Releasing the frogs is definitely the most rewarding part of all of our work, all the office work, all the, the field work, the habitat evaluation, the habitat renovations to put these frogs back out into the landscape. Um, the releases are definitely, they, they make it all very worth it. And then to go back and monitor our releases and see the success, it's, it's pretty amazing.